So this is a quick tutorial to demonstrate how to create a show more button underneath the repeating group to show more cells whenever the user clicks it. So let's jump in. So here is our repeating group. Okay, here is our repeating group. In the parent group itself, I have, well, I'm going to actually add 40 pixels of row gap to separate the button I'm about to place into this group from the repeating group. So I'm going to grab a button, draw it in there. This will say see more. And a quick style, so that will be 120 and this will be 60, center that button. Perfect, just where I want it. So at the moment I am searching for products. I'm getting all the products in. And I could do something like, you know, items until eight, and then if I refresh, I will get items until eight. But that is a static number. We somehow need to make this item until eight dynamic so that we can press a button and then we can increment that value. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a state on the page itself. I'm going to create a state and I'm going to call the state items. And that will just be a number. Okay, which means we now have a dynamic way of assigning the number of rows to show. I'm going to set the default to eight. So on page load, we're seeing eight. Okay, so back in search for products, I can say items until, I can replace this eight with that state I've just created, where the default is eight items. Let's refresh. Perfect, there we go eight items. And now we need to set up the action on this button. This is quite a simple action. Okay, we're just going to say start edit the workflow. And let's go ahead and set state and change that dynamic value to add an additional eight. So I find the state there it is there. And to increment a value, I have to first choose the value because that we could have pressed that already a few times. So there is a value. And I just say plus, and then I set the value I want here. So take however many items we're currently showing, or how, however many cells, and then add eight every time we click. So we've got eight, see more, another eight, see more, another eight. And this greatly helps with the performance, folks. That's why we're actually doing this. That's the purpose of this. And show the last of it there. Now, we don't actually want to see this button anymore. If we talk about user experience, a user will think, I'm clicking on seeing more and nothing else is appearing. So why don't we actually hide this button when the number of items in the database equals the state? Okay. So on the button itself, very simply, I've got a conditional tab open here. I'm going to say when do a search for the products, the available products count from the database, when that is smaller than or equal to the action overlay, which is the page, it's item count. Okay, the number of items. That evaluates to a number, that evaluates to a number. Therefore, we can use an operator to compare the two. And it's really the equals here that I'm interested in. That's when it's not visible. Okay. Right, so we've got eight, 16, 24, and I think we have two more to go. There we go, button is hidden. If I refresh, reset the state, and we're back to see more. Okay, again, that is just a nice little um, method to help with performance, because specifically with image galleries, you need to be careful uh, with the performance. So page load performance matters. So I hope that was fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson.